And on the phone, the technical guru of not just the majority report, but uh, technologies that you probably have used in the past, uh, not not just the uh, majority report app. Uh, I don't know how uh, close to the vest you techies like to play this, Kyle, uh, but um, uh, certainly you're uh, renowned in that uh, community of uh, of coders and guys like that, right? Uh, very. You know, I don't, I don't like to talk about it, but I'll agree. Okay. And uh, people can follow you on Twitter, or, or did you shut down your Twitter account? I actually deleted my Twitter account. I couldn't take it anymore. All right. Well, there you go. So forget that. Uh, So, Kyle, um, talk to us about uh, blockchain. Sure. So, um, you know, the the, the interview was really good. I was trying to think about what I can add to the conversation. So I'll just give you my brief history of my interactions of dealing with this stuff. So, you know, uh, two years ago, I I had someone pay me for lunch on Coinbase because I thought it would be funny. Um, and that $10 lunch turned into like, you know, <laughs> turned into like a $300 lunch that someone paid for me. Wow. Um, so that, you know, and he's still pissed about that. So that's where it started, where I kind of thought it was kind of interesting, kind of funny. And this past summer, I met a friend that I just, uh, had worked at a company with and he, he was doing an ICO, one of these ICOs that the, the uh, guest just talked about. And. This and is initial like, initial coin offering, right? Right. So it's kind of like an IPO, except with no regulation, no rules, no reality sometimes. And in a way, it's kind of like the ICO world is kind of the stock market in the 1990s where people like had ideas of products and people bought those ideas, basically. Um, now it's just the idea is money and the product is money. And that's what people are buying into. What? And now I I have a sense of and you were talking about sort of the dot com uh, run up and what ultimately became a bubble, at least in the late 90s. There's like, I've got an idea where we're going to develop a website where people can go and actually watch video, maybe on their phone, you know, that type of thing uh, back in the in the late 90s. What is it? What are if I'm going into a room and I'm selling majority report coins? And you're going in and you're selling Kyle coins, uh, and we're both offering these ICOs. What are the talking points that could possibly differentiate the the value of my coin versus your coin? Well, right. So at the end of the day, to the potential investor, the product is money, right? This coin, I think, you know, I'm trying to argue my coin will have value later. But in another way, it's kind of like the guest talked about. It's kind of like you could you could look at it as shares. I'm buying shares of a company. I'm buying into their product they will eventually build. And in fact, a lot of the ICOs are basic, basically yet to be built product ideas and yet to be proven product ideas. And there's like a website with a bunch of like headshots of people that are involved. And that's it. Like in a lot of cases, that's but, all that there is. But are the value, but, but, are, but am I arguing when I go in for the majority report coin? And I'm trying to, I'm going to this investor and I'm saying, you got to invest in my ICO as opposed to Kyle Coins. Um, am I saying, well, look, look at all the people, look at my website, look at all the headshots there. I mean, I've got the right. most talented, all these guys came from Stanford. And, um, and, right. and so you should invest with me. Or is there some other value proposition that I'm offering? Like, oh, I've got, um, you know, uh, I got 30,000 people who listen to my uh, podcast who tomorrow I can guarantee you will be using majority report coins because I have a, um, I have a pass through rate of, you know, uh, 65% yield when I'm, I'm, I'm hawking coins to uh, my audience. So as of uh, tomorrow, you're going to have a 35,000 uh, person um, just, you know, a base of, uh, of customers. I mean, is that, is that what I'm arguing or am I simply arguing like my technology is better or I'm going to have pictures of me on there and you want a picture of me on your coin as opposed to Kyle? I don't know. What, what is it that I'm like, what am I, what's my value proposition versus the other person's value proposition? Right. So the one proposition proposition is get in early on my thing, my thing that will have value and go up period. Another proposition is I'm building something that's a product it's a little bit of a twist on the blockchain and this will be big just like the blockchain blockchain is or as, as other products are. 
Um, so, so usually there's some derivative of those two ideas where, you know, you're selling yourself, but you're also selling a potential idea that does something different with the blockchain that hasn't been done yet. And there are a lot of things that haven't been done yet. But with that said, the blockchain is also a somewhat limited idea. It's, it's limited in, in its scope in some ways as well. Now, when wow. you say the blockchain, hold on one second. When you say the blockchain, is there a blockchain or is blockchain like there can be there's multiple blockchains and, and you set one up? Right. So Bitcoin has its own blockchain. The guest talked about Ethereum, which is kind of a blockchain for that is a blockchain platform, basically, for a bunch of these coins or tokens. Okay. And for every coin you see, they're either um, they're either on Ethereum. They may run their own blockchain, but that seems to be not happening as much. It seems like people, if they want to publish a token and, and get something up and running, launch an ICO, for example, they'll just use Ethereum. And they'll define what he, what the guest was talking about, a smart contract, which basically defines how the coin operates and how it can be transacted. What other uses uh, are there for blockchain? I mean, I keep hearing people say to me like, well, you know, Bitcoin is one thing and, you know, crypto coins are one thing. But really, the real value is coming out of the development of blockchain technology. Uh, where, What other applications will there be for blockchain technology and um, how how new is it? I mean, it, it almost feels like. I mean, how new is it or is conceptually well, I, I, has it been out there for a long time? It's just it hasn't been able to be as perfected. Well, I think I would think about the blockchain as like uh, the first point is it's kind of like a database everyone has access to and everyone can get a copy of. Now, the reason maybe it's now more possible to kind of architect the system this way is because of the fast internet speeds, um, bandwidth is increased. Now having a larger file that's line, that can grow, I, I actually think the Ethereum blockchain last night, and it's about 60 gigabytes, um, or I, I did a version of the sync last night. But anyway, it gets pretty large. It gets actually took a long, it took me hours and hours and hours, almost a day to sync the Ethereum blockchain, which means it's like, even though everyone has access to this giant database, it's also somewhat prohibitively slow to acquire. And you have to keep up with it and keep in sync with it to, to affect it, you know, to, to add transactions, to participate in the network. Okay. So you need a lot of speed. And so what else would you use the blockchain so, for? Uh, yes. Right. But, but in, in, in concept, the concept is it's a database everyone has access to. And because we can all access it, because we all kind of also help run it, we, we trust it more because we can, because there is more transparency. So one example would be a um, popular idea right now is doing mortgage records uh, for a given town or state or whatever on, instead of using MERS, using the blockchain because everyone can kind of publish and see and witness it. Now that may or may not be a good idea, but I think that the point is how many ideas are made better or are better because the information is accessible by everybody. I you love know? the fact that uh, the first thing that you came up with was basically we could replace that fraudulent system that exists now in terms of MERS with a uh, with another system that will be at least more transparent but also uh, maintaining its uh, fraudulency. Right. So so for a lot of banks, a lot, a lot of people say, well, I like the blockchain idea. I think the, the idea of a decent, you know, decentralized database, a database which everyone can hold but is also still secure, it's interesting. And I think there's potential there for certain applications, but to act like every single product that exists has a blockchain equivalent, I think is false. I mean, in a lot of situations, you don't want data to be passed around. You don't want everyone holding it. Um, you don't want to architect the system that way because it can become very, very slow. It's not optimal. So there are only, there are only a few kind of categories of ideas in which the blockchain makes sense. I think for the current, you know, the application of Bitcoin, it makes sense for some of these currencies that you would, that are set up this way, it makes sense. But how it works in the real world, it's more of a buzzword at this point than like a reality. It's, is conceptually speaking, is, is there a, an analogy between like blockchain and say like Wikipedia? Kind of, but it would be, okay, we can go with that because even Wikipedia is hosted on its own servers, right? Right. Like there is some sort of centralization. Right. It would be the same, and you can do this, by the way. You can download all of Wikipedia. I used to do this when I did machine learning because we would train on the data set of Wikipedia. 
and it's like gigabytes and gigabytes large. Um, it, it's or it's actually a, it's pretty big. You can get all the text, and everyone can have a copy of Wikipedia, but it's a giant file, right? So you would have to open your giant file on your desktop, and then search it manually. And then whenever someone else updated Wikipedia on the main site, you'd have to download those updates and bring them down to your computer, and then access them. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so, so it's almost more like uh, like copy. the way that Dropbox works amongst, let's say, you have different computers, except for in this instance, it's like everybody shares this Dropbox. Right. And so it's a, so, but there are some upsides to doing things this way sometimes, meaning like the idea that no one necessarily owns the system, that everyone kind of is a part of it and everyone has a copy makes it more resilient, right? You know, if one person drops off and loses their copy of Wikipedia, there's another thousand people that have everything, right? Um, so there are, there are benefits to designing a system like this. And there are reasons and, you know, having centralized systems are, I have a lot of problems as well, right? That if that one centralized server goes down, then everyone loses everything, right. right? So this is trying to combat that and do the opposite. But in some cases where the data data sizes get too large or maybe too unwieldy, it may or may not be a good idea. I feel like we're living in one of those eras where, like, if uh, I wanted to go raise money to, let's say, expand the majority report, like, I could go into a room with, with investors and say, we're using blockchain technology, and we're going to totally expand it. And they would just go, like, whoa, all right. <laughs> like, I feel like it's one yeah, of those. Yeah, this is true. Like, like mean, we're in one of those. I'm, that's one of those words where we just go in, like, we're doing, you know, like, what uh, what they said, uh, you know, 12 years ago, they all I had to see was like, we're doing this 2.0. And people would just be like, oh, well, in that case, here's some, here's a check, uh, that type of thing. And I feel like blockchain sort of has that, that aura around it right now. Well, I, I work with a company right now that, that, that has a successful product going They're They have revenue. And instead of raising venture capital money, they're pivoting and doing an ICO and raising $30 million equivalent in Bitcoin and other coins for their ICO instead of like raising money in a traditional way. Mm -hmm. And they just dropped everything and they're doing that. And I'm, I'm kind of like, I can't believe it, but I can kind of understand it. Um, and it's like, it worked so far uh, that they're not, on, they're not done with their token sale yet. And when I, when I was talking at the beginning about, I've met a guy who was doing an ICO and at the time I didn't know anything about Ethereum and he explained it. And I started reading into it and learning about it. He ended, they ended up, doing an ICO, they raised $15 million and, um, and the value was held and it went up to 80 million at one point, it went back down. Um, you know, they're, they're on, uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they're traded and I still don't know what their product does. Now this is a guy I know personally and I was uh, not very impressed with him when I worked with him and he's still unimpressive, but he, he <laughs> just decided to drop the product they were building, okay, this is another case where they had a product, which I still don't understand. They stopped building that, made an ICO, did like a worldwide roadshow to sell it, um, and it worked. So, you know, and I, I worked with him like less, like a year ago. Uh, and then he so went off and joined the company. Maybe you shouldn't have been such a sucker. You should have gotten into the bottom right. uh, the, 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 the bottom ladder with yeah, him. Yeah, I'm impressed with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Know he mean. Easy to say that I now. Know he can be, I never really appreciated the quality of his work. Oh, <laughs> another ten million. Okay, whatever. <laughs> right. I, I think that, like, I feel like Sam and I have a lot in common in this. Yeah, way. No, I'm I'm you, I, I've always <laughs> known. I mean, I've, I've gotten to know you a little bit. And it's, and I, and I like you, and I've always appreciated. And I, I've always sensed a certain similarity between you and Sam. And now I'm listening to you, and I'm like, oh, okay. Literally, right. Kyle is tech Sam Cedar. Right. Oh yeah, that's, and, and, that's the only person I knew who became incredibly wealthy in this field that I'm in. Yeah. And they weren't particularly. They didn't. They I don't think. I actually don't think they're very, very talented. Anyway. I don't think they do such a good job. Ah, uh, anyways, I got no no coffee for me this afternoon. I'm saving. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to buy into the ICO. I'm just going to keep working on fans. FM. That was a big deal. You're going to really love it when it's done. <laughs> I set up. I mean, I actually yeah, set up a fake meeting with the All right, well, people. All right, well, Kyle. Wait, 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 one more question for Kyle. I got a question for Kyle that I think he'll appreciate. I'm hearing a lot of skepticism, but you know, Bitcoin—they got blockchain technology. And I like that. 
<laughs> Do they got a video? <laughs> they got videos. Oh, I'm, I don't know. I don't think you can really argue with that. <laughs> That's uh, my favorite new character. Kyle, my favorite. <laughs> seriously, let's uh, let's make sure that we discuss this whole new uh, majority report coin uh, because I, <laughs> it's already coined. Well, did I, I didn't tell you about it. I have a. I sent you a white paper already. I wrote it. It's called Cuck Coin. <laughs> I think it's going to be big. Such a good idea. Uh, now, cuck, cuck, uh, I don't know how to go there, but I, I just, my, my, Myla has signed up for something called Sweat Coin, what which, is that? which is, oh, as, right. you, as you like exercise or um, walk. Oh, it, it like it. It it does. It's not. It's not a. It's not really a cryptocurrency. But I think you just get like coupons. But and I think it's basically because they track you and they see where you go, <laughs> and they get that data and they sell it. That's what I told them. It's her, incredibly said, creepy. There, and, there's there's like oh bank. oh by by the way, yeah. well first of all that that app is a real life implementation of, of a Black Mirror episode, just a one to one, and um and uh, in terms of people selling your location data, um. That is happening to a degree you guys do not understand. I'm not going to get into it, but it is being sold everywhere. Are they allowed to do that with children? It's So when you install an app, right, you give your app that location preference. You say, hey, you can use my location to track my workout. That's why, that's why I'm using you. But then behind the scenes, even though you agreed to give that app that data, they can give that data to someone else behind the scenes. And you've given, it to, you've given it to everybody. You've given it to everybody at that point. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, helping I, me do more time, time on the treadmill. Can't really argue with that. But I mean, you know what it is? I don't like Nancy Pelosi, though. I've got to wait for the video to come out. <laughs> got to wait for the video. I mean, you're saying a lot of things, but I don't see the video of the app makers selling that material. got to have I, your facts, man. I go back and forth on that on the selling of that data. I mean, in terms of like... And broadly speaking, I'm obviously against it, but in terms of like whether or not I would give it up or um, it, it's uh, it's nuts. And I sat, you know, Myla down. And I said, look, if you want to sell, uh, you understand, you know, I just told her if, if you're not paying for it, then you are the product. And she's like, yeah, whatever, dad. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like yeah. grown-ups, we opt into all sorts of shit that we are too dumb to understand, and that's on us. But kids, that seems like a bit too far. I agree. Yeah, I would say anything that's available to the iOS SDK, like Bluetooth information, local area information, location information, sensor information, pretty much any piece of data is being bottled up and sold. The, Period. I know. The, uh, the real app, that you need to develop, Kyle, is the one that will send fake data so that I can sign right. into your app and then I can sign into any other app and it sends distorted data because all we can do is screw up the uh, noise to signal ratio. We can't get rid of the signal. We can only increase the noise. And that's what I'm suggesting. So, man, and you I voted can. for Hillary Clinton, and you talk about <laughs> app material. Man, see, that's the kind of thing that I just can't. I can't trust that. <laughs> All right, Kyle. <laughs> Thanks so much, buddy. All right, no problem. All right, talk to you later. <laughs> See ya. Thanks, Kyle. He's gonna, he's gonna build that. He's gonna build that uh, noise to signal app. That's a great idea, isn't it?